two students were arrested in the fall of 2023 for damaging a water fountain installation at the City Hall Pocket Park in Oxford, Mississippi. 19-year-old UM psychology major Abigail Fuqua and 18-year-old Madison Brown, who majored in integrated marketing communications at the same university, were caught on CCTV causing thousands of dollars worth of damage to the fountain. The duo was recorded rolling the structure sphere off a platform, consequently breaking it. The compromising damage was not only to the sphere itself but also to the fountain's plumbing. The teenagers were arrested by the Oxford Police Department. According to an official press release from October the 31st, Fuqua and Brown were charged with felony malicious mischief and each issued a $5,000 bond which was the rough monetary equivalent of the damage they'd caused. Number 7. Bridget Sheer Gallis A former Disney actress was arrested in November of 2023 alongside two other young women for vandalizing a branch of the Israel-based defense contractor Elbit Systems in Merrimack, New Hampshire. 27-year-old Bridget Sheer Gallis was known for her appearance in the 2011 Disney sketch comedy series So Random, as well as for smaller roles in films and TV shows including Bad Teacher and Criminal Minds. Elbit Systems, the offices of which were based in Haifa, had its Merrimack branch stormed by Sheer Gallis along with 19-year-old self-described communist Kala Walsh and Sophie Marika Ross, aged 22. They were part of a wider group of demonstrators who were seen blocking the building's driveway while chanting support for Palestine. The anti-Israel group called Palestine Action US was co-founded by Walsh, whom the media described as a darling of leftist political activism in New England. The vandalism on Elbit systems involved a smoke-generating incendiary device seen on the building's roof while its outside walls were splattered with red paint. Inside, Shigalis and her accomplices smashed skylights and damaged HVAC equipment. After Shigalis, Walsh and Ross were arrested, an incendiary device similar to the one spotted on the roof was found on one of them. The trio faced a slew of felony charges including rioting, sabotage and attempted burglary along with one count each of misdemeanor criminal trespassing. After posting her $20,000 bail, Walsh wrote on X that Palestine will be free. A political commentator would later describe the young women as limousine liberals who grew up with a silver spoon in their mouths suggesting they failed to grasp the intricacies of the Israel-Palestine conflict. Number 6. Joshua Miller A Democratic state senator in Rhode Island was arrested in the summer of 2023 for keying a vehicle allegedly because it had a Biden sucks bumper sticker. The car in question was parked at the Garden City Center in Cranston, next to Joshua Miller who served as the Senate Democrat Policy Chairman. Upon hearing a scratching noise, the driver got out of his SUV and saw Miller with a set of keys in hand. He confronted the senator over key in his vehicle, but the elected official simply denied it and walked away. Miller had, however, been captured in the act on surveillance video. The car owner called the police, which led to a series of awkward body cam recorded interactions between the senator and local law enforcement as they tried to figure out the situation and he tried to shift blame for the incident. Miller initially adamantly denied key in the vehicle and claimed that he'd felt threatened by the driver, whom he supposedly thought was a gun nut who'd recognized him as a politician and targeted him for his backing of anti-gun legislation. Miller alleged that he'd previously been stalked and threatened by a group of gun enthusiasts. One of the officers bluntly told the senator he didn't recognize you. Miller then name-dropped Colonel Michael Winquist, the chief of the police department, and urged the officers to contact him as he was allegedly aware of the senator's plight with the gun nuts. The plan backfired when it emerged that Miller had never reported such threats to Winquist nor to any other members of the Cranston Police Department. In another body cam video of officers talking to Miller at his house, the senator admitted to being the vandal 
He maintained that he'd felt threatened and that the victim had dared him to key his car. The senator stated the guy started on me as soon as I opened my door. A police officer then replied in disbelief that there was video of the entire incident which didn't support any of the stories Miller had given law enforcement. In spite of him saying that he thought he'd felt under threat, the senator was taken to the station and charged with misdemeanor vandalism, malicious injury to property, and obstructing a police officer. He ultimately pleaded no contest, admitted that he'd made up the gun nut story, and also apologized for the language he'd used during his interviews with the police. Miller was ordered to pay restitution of $2,850 to the owner of the SUV and to donate $250 to the Rhode Island Food Community Bank, in addition to paying $186.75 in court fees. The charges were to remain on Miller's record for a year and then expunged, providing he stayed out of trouble with the law. Number 5. Catherine Gail Creedle On the evening of January the 2nd of 2020, CCTV captured three women tampering with an ice sculpture installation at the Gore Creek Promenade in Vail Village, Colorado. As one of them was recording on her cell phone, another of the women, subsequently identified as 22-year-old Catherine Gail Creedle, began kicking a segment of the ice sculpture. She delivered several kicks until the slab toppled over and broke apart. The trio then took off running and fled the scene. The Vail Police Department shared the surveillance footage, along with photos of the suspects, and began receiving tips almost immediately. No arrests were reported, but a few days after the vandalism had occurred, Creedle surrendered to the Eagle County Sheriff's Office. The damage she'd caused was estimated at $2,000 and she faced a felony charge of criminal mischief. Number 4. Sierra Booker On January the 12th, of 2024, law enforcement in Nashville, Tennessee, was called by Tristan Allen for assistance in recovering his possessions from the home of his girlfriend, Sierra Booker. The previous day, Booker had celebrated her 30th birthday. She posted a photo marking the occasion on her social media, which showed her in a pair of fishnet stockings and a green bodysuit. Booker was smiling while surrounded by gifts and balloons, but the reality of the event had been markedly different. She and Alan had gotten into a heated argument, to which the man reacted by leaving her home. He'd left behind his iPhone, wallet, medication and work clothes. When Alan returned to the address with the police, Booker allowed them inside. She then revealed that she'd thrown her boyfriend's stuff in a dumpster down the road from whence the belongings could no longer be recovered. Following her admission, Booker was taken to the Metro Nashville jail and booked on a vandalism charge. Number 3. Carmen Shambly 19-year-old Carmen Shambly was arrested in early September of 2016 near Clearwater, Florida. After setting fire to a vehicle in an act of revenge against her ex-boyfriend, Shambly was captured by surveillance cameras igniting the blaze in the trunk of a Honda. Law enforcement would also report that a rag had been set on fire and placed in the vehicle's gas tank. Shambly fled the scene on a bike in the immediate aftermath. Local man Thomas Jennings was alerted by his roommate that his car was on fire. The two men attempted to extinguish the blaze, but as Jennings would later tell ABC Action News, it was too much. Following the release of the surveillance video, the police received various tips from members of the public, leading to Shambly's arrest. The woman was taken to Pinellas County Jail and charged with second-degree arson. It emerged, however, that she targeted the wrong vehicle, as Jennings reported that he'd never seen her before and had no idea who she was. Today's topic was requested by Coke Dozer. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Jonathan Hernandez On December the 12th of 2020, a homeowner in the town of Lehigh Acres in Florida's southwest returned to their home to find a lifeless man dangling from their window. The emergency services were called and the body was identified as 32-year-old Jonathan Hernandez, 
an area rapper who performed as Taz UFO. The father of five was suspected to have attempted to burglarize the home located on 46th Street Southwest near Nora Avenue South by gaining access through a window that was nearly six feet off the ground as reported by the Lee County Sheriff's Office. Hernandez had lifted the window and snuck inside head first. The window then came down like a guillotine on the suspected burglar's neck. Hernandez was pinned and succumbed to suffocation at the scene. The homeowner provided a photo that showed his limp body as it was still trapped outside the house. Hernandez was known to local police as he'd been arrested in the past for various offenses including marijuana possession, theft and larceny as well as driving without a license. While the investigation into the matter suggested Hernandez had attempted a burglary, those close to him including his fiance Patricia Duarte maintained that he was an innocent, kind-hearted man, Duarte, who in the aftermath asked for donations on social media to cover Hernandez's funeral costs, told a media outlet, I need the actual truth to come to light. When attempting to be the hero goes wrong, is coming up right after number one. Stick around if you'd like to catch that episode as well. Number one, Eloise Birmingham and Sean Cassidy. Leading up to September of 2023, Englishwoman Eloise Birmingham and her on-again, off-again boyfriend Sean Cassidy were feuding over custody of the young child they shared. During one of their arguments, Cassidy had allegedly assaulted Birmingham and caused criminal damage to her phone, for which she was arrested. The feud culminated in the early fall of 2023 when Birmingham learned that Cassidy was planning to travel overseas with their two-year-old. Cassidy was at the time living with his father in Widnes, Cheshire. Birmingham traveled to the property while Cassidy wasn't there. She entered the home and went to her ex's bedroom where she caused various damages, including ripping up his passport so that he couldn't leave the country. Birmingham then sent Cassidy a message to taunt him with what she'd done. The 19-year-old was arrested and according to updates from late January of 2024, she pleaded guilty to burglary. She was conditionally discharged for 12 months in order to pay court costs and the cost of replacing the passport. Cassidy himself was at the time awaiting trial after he'd pleaded not guilty to assaulting his ex and damaging her phone. After graduating from Liverpool John Moores University, 22-year-old Englishwoman Yasmin Jones took a part-time job at a pub in the Liverpool city centre. On August the 27th of 2014, she offered to walk two of her boss's dogs and took them to a nature reserve to look for red squirrels. While walking around the train crossing in Formby, Merseyside, one of the dogs spotted another across the line and ran wriggling between the gates. In an attempt to rescue the pet from an oncoming train, Jones rushed after it and ended up on the tracks. The young woman was struck at Fisherman's Level Crossing between Freshfield and Ainsdale stations. Both she and the dog were killed in the collision. The crossing was considered to pose a high risk of accident because of a bend in the track that reduced visibility and made approaching trains visible for only eight seconds before passing through. It had been scheduled to be replaced with a footbridge before the tragedy struck. Number 8. Blake Moss On April the 18th of 2023, Blake Moss, a loss prevention officer at a Home Depot store in San Francisco, California, spotted 32-year-old Benicia Knapps trying to steal a phone charger. Moss went to confront Knapps and her boyfriend, 31-year-old David Guillory, upon noticing that they were trying to leave the store without paying for the item. The conversation rapidly devolved into a physical struggle outside the store as 26-year-old Moz tried to wrestle the pilfered charger from the couple. Knapps, a licensed security guard with a criminal history, then pulled out a handgun. The woman fired at Moz from point-blank range and hit him in his chest. She then left him bleeding on the ground near the loading dock area before she and her boyfriend fled in their car, where their two-year-old child was waiting for them. Fellow Home Depot employees took Moors inside and called 911. Paramedics rushed to the scene and took the man to a nearby hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. Roughly 15 minutes after the shooting, deputies from Alameda County Sheriff's Office managed to locate the suspect's vehicle. Knapps and Guillory led law enforcement on a pursuit into East Oakland and eventually pulled over as they reached their apartment complex on May Avenue. Guillory tried to flee on foot but was apprehended. The couple were detained on suspicion of murder, robbery, conspiracy and child endangerment. 
Naps was placed on a mental health hold after she choked herself unconscious with a seatbelt in the back of the police cruiser. Later, the handgun used in the fatal shooting was found at an intersection near the Home Depot. Naps was charged with murder and being a felon in possession of a firearm, while Guillory was charged with accessory after the fact and evading police. According to investigators' reports, Naps admitted to having a gun but claimed that she'd accidentally discharged the weapon during the confrontation. Number 7. Daniel Penny On May the 1st of 2023, Jordan Neely, a homeless man with a documented history of mental illness, was having an episode on a subway train in New York City. Neely was pacing back and forth, yelling and threatening passengers. The man was reportedly talking about having no food, nothing to drink, screaming that he was tired and that he didn't care if he went to jail. Seeing that he was scaring the other passengers, 24-year-old former U.S. Marine Daniel James Penny intervened. He charged Neely from behind, placed him in a chokehold, and dragged him down to the ground, where two other passengers stepped in to immobilize his arms. Neely was held down for several minutes. Due to the continuous pressure applied to his neck by Penny, he became unresponsive and died. At the scene, the former was not charged nor taken into custody. After the medical examiner's office ruled Neely's death a homicide, the Manhattan District Attorney's Office released a statement to announce that the former serviceman was expected to appear in Manhattan Criminal Court on Friday the 12th on a charge of manslaughter in the second degree. If convicted, Penny would face up to 15 years behind bars. The incident sparked protests from activists demanding better treatment of those struggling with homelessness and mental illness. Penny was released after securing his $100,000 bond. He received support from the public through a fund set up by his attorneys, which, as of the latest updates, had amassed close to $400,000. His next court appearance was scheduled for July. Number 6. Kate Mason 28-year-old Kate Mason was driving a Toyota Camry southbound on Interstate 95 in Stafford County, Virginia, on April 7, 2018. She was less than a mile away from the exit for Route 627 when she veered off the road and crashed into a guardrail. In the accident, Mason's pet pug, Stella, got out of the car and ran along the highway. In an effort to save her from being hit by oncoming vehicles, Mason left the Camry and went chasing after Stella. As the heroic rescue attempt unfolded, they were both hit by a Honda Civic and died at the scene. Mason's mourning family told the media that she had a natural instinct to protect people and animals. The Virginia Commonwealth University graduate was also a member of the U.S. Army, serving in the National Guard and Reserves as a combat medic. In the aftermath of her passing, the woman's family asked for those who wanted to honor her to make donations to the African Wildlife Foundation. Number 5. Douglas Cox On May the 1st of 2019, former U.S. Marine Douglas Cox was with a friend at Dream Arcade, an internet cafe in Jacksonville, Florida where he was reported as being a regular customer. There were two other patrons and a female employee inside when a man wearing all black entered the cafe with a gun attempting a robbery. The man aimed at the employee and discharged his weapon, but Cox reportedly jumped in front to protect her. Cox's friend Barry Jackson described his actions as heroic, stating that he got the bullet before she did. Cox was shot and the robber fled the scene. Paramedics were called to this cafe and they tried treating the 47-year-old's wounds, but he did not survive the shooting. According to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, no one else was injured in the incident. The suspect remained at large and officers were unable to identify him as of subsequent updates on the matter. Cox's girlfriend, Lisa Feiter, told the media that Cox died doing what he believed in. Number 4. Reese Radford on September the 29th of 2022, Derek Owusu and his friend, 47-year-old Lewis James, were chatting and drinking with a teenage girl at a bus stop in Sheffield, South Yorkshire, England. As 26-year-old Reese Radford passed by with a group of friends, he witnessed Owusu punching the girl and intervened. A fight broke out between the three men and Radford ended up on the ground where he was violently kicked in the head by 40-year-old Owusu. James then pulled out a knife and stabbed Radford once in the chest. He then stole his wallet and removed his belt before waving it at passers-by, who were trying to help by calling an ambulance. Both suspects fled the scene and James later dropped his knife into a drain. Radford was taken to a hospital where he passed away six days after the incident. Owusu and James were detained and charged with murder. In May of 2023, Owusu was given a sentence of a minimum 15 years in prison, while James was sentenced to 25 years. 
Number three, Prasanna Arul Chelvam. On May the 26th of 2013, Prasanna Arul Chelvam went shopping at a Costco cash and carry store in Watford, England after leaving his silver transit van in the car park. When the 34-year-old returned to the vehicle, he loaded a large box containing 21 packs of cigarettes then took his trolley back to a bay. Upon coming back to the car, Arul Chelvam noticed that the newly bought stock had been disturbed and spotted a different van speeding off. The man then started chasing after the fleeing vehicle and jumped inside through an open side door. 34-year-old Michael McKerney, who was at the back of the van, pushed Arul Chelvam out. The latter managed to hold on to the side of the vehicle, but McKerney shut the door, causing him to fall on the ground and hit his head. A customer would later report hearing a nasty crunch as Arul Chelvam's head struck the pavement. The van sped off with Patrick O'Driscoll behind the wheel while his cousin, James O'Driscoll, fled the scene in a separate vehicle. Harold Chelvin was taken to St. Mary's Hospital in London and died 11 days later on June the 6th. The day before Harold Chelvin was killed, the cousins had carried out and attempted several thefts at cash and carry stores in Dagenham, Chelmsford, Colchester and Ipswich. McKerney went on the run after he was arrested and bailed in December of 2013. A European arrest warrant was issued and he was captured a year later in Corby, Northamptonshire. He admitted during the legal proceedings that followed that he wanted a few cheap packets of cigarettes and received a sentence of 11 years behind bars for manslaughter and conspiracy to steal. He had 17 prior convictions and was serving a suspended sentence at the time of the incident with Errol Chelvam. It stemmed from a similar theft at a cash and carry in Sheerness in which he'd stolen a car from a man who tried to stop him, fell into the road suffering non-fatal injuries. In October of 2014, Patrick and James O'Driscoll pleaded guilty to manslaughter and received sentences of 10 and a half years and seven and a half years respectively. Number two, Vincent Kelly. On Father's Day 2013, Vincent Kelly was shopping at a giant eagle in South Strabane Township, Washington. While passing by a citizen's bank inside the store, the 46-year-old noticed an armed robbery was taking place and decided to chase the fleeing suspect out into the parking lot. Kelly and the robber tussled inside the getaway car before the latter discharged his firearm. Kelly suffered fatal injuries after he was shot several times. The gunman then fled and no arrests were made for almost 10 years as investigators had no leads related to the case. In December of 2022, Keith Wilk, aged 39, was arrested after his former girlfriend had contacted the authorities. The woman claimed that Wilk had confessed the crime to her in 2020. Investigators also managed to collect DNA from an umbrella that the robber was carrying on the day of the incident. In January of 2023, a judge ruled that prosecutors had sufficient evidence to order a trial for Wilk on charges of homicide, robbery, aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, and firearm crimes. Number 1. Michael Uriost 24-year-old Michael Uriost was at a Circle K gas station in Albuquerque, New Mexico, when he witnessed a violent scene between 58-year-old Eric Ray Ford and a female employee on February 11th of 2023. Ford had reportedly been causing a scene and the worker asked him to leave the area, which enraged the man who then punched her in the face. Uriost rushed to the woman's defense and confronted Ford, sparking a physical confrontation between them. As the fight unfolded, they made their way out into the parking lot, where Ford fell to the ground and rolled towards one of the gasoline pumps. Ford's wife, who was in their car, stepped outside and began hitting the younger man with a wooden cane. As another customer intervened and separated the fight, Ford took out a firearm and shot Uriost. The former and his wife then got back into the car and sped away from the scene. Another customer was shot but did not suffer life-threatening injuries. Witnesses got a hold of the 58-year-old's car license plates and called the emergency number to report the incident. Urios was tended to by paramedics at the scene and taken to a hospital where he succumbed to his injuries in the emergency room. On February the 13th, police tracked Ford's car to the Four Hills Shopping Center and arrested him on the charge of murder. He was booked into the Metropolitan Detention Center while awaiting his trial. In April of 2023, Ford's wife, Rosalind Lee, was also charged with murder, conspiracy and tampering in evidence. A judge subsequently ruled for the woman to be released from custody until the commencement of her legal proceedings. Thanks for watching. Would you rather give up your best friend or all of your non-essential material possessions? Let us know in the comments section below.